Welcome to Fashion, Faith, and Flair. And today's faith message is Christian faith, relationship or legalistic trap. I have my own definition of Christian legalism, and that's putting rules and regulations above the relationship with Christ. Some people say that Christianity is all about do's and don'ts. It's about the relationship with Christ. It's not about the rules. Christ is full of grace. Works can alienate us from the love of God. And it's also conditional love. And God loves us regardless of where we're at. He loves us. And as humans, I think we like to always (laughs) say that transformation is about getting to that next level, like it's a pyramid or something. I look at it more like he transforms our hearts. And I have to ask myself, do I follow Christ or do I follow man-made rules, human-made rules, however you want to refer to that? Now, the Pharisees during the, the biblical times, they prided themselves on keeping the law at least outwardly, and they lorded it over the common people who had a really tough time of keeping the rules. And so as as adept as the Pharisees were at keeping rules, they failed to recognize God when he stood before them. So if you'll remember in John 8, 19, then they asked him, where's your father? You do not know me or my father, replied Jesus. If you knew me, you would know my father also. The transformation, again, comes from our hearts and from the Holy Spirit working in and through our lives. We all have a journey and we all have a story. And so it reminds me of this story. I went to Israel five years ago and we went to the Jordan River where people were going to get baptized. And I made the decision not to get baptized because I had just gotten baptized a year and a half before. I had rededicated my life and and I got baptized in Athens. And so I was in the gift shop looking around and there were the most beautiful Jerusalem 18 karat or 24 karat gold crosses and they were gorgeous and so i met this jewish man that um had a sister who worked there with him and he was for whatever reason quite smitten with me his sister said he really likes you and so he wanted me to he was going to give me one of these crosses it was fine jewelry if i gave him one of my hats and um it was a hat that i had made one of my wearable art hats and i just didn't feel right about um you know giving one of my work of art to him it wasn't like he wanted to wear it he was just very smitten with me and so i happened to start sharing with them about the night that i had accepted christ into my heart and the sister was a christian and he was not because I was like, are you a Jewish Christian? You know, that changes everything. If you're a Jewish Christian, I would, you know, I was like, I'd love to go out with him. Um, and so anyway, she, um, she said, yes, I'm a Christian. And I told about how I got the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit when I, when I had asked Christ into my heart and how the next day I had that peaceful feeling. She said, she goes, I wish I had that peace. And she said, I, She goes, I would love that piece. She goes, you have a story to tell. She said, people need to hear it. And so she apparently had not experienced the peace of God. And I didn't get into quite an in-depth conversation with her. But what I, I thought at the time, maybe she was practicing Christianity but maybe not in the relationship. Maybe she didn't have that experience. I, I'm not 100% sure. I just know that that was part of the conversation was she wanted the, the peace and love of God. And I can only speak from my experience. We all have our own walk with God. I can tell you that 
for me, it is definitely about the relationship. And it may be because I was brought up as a Christian scientist, which didn't really talk about the relationship with God. I mean, I got some biblical principles from that religion, but I never knew that I could have such a personal, intimate relationship that has has gotten to mean so much to me over the years, even when I like turn my turn my back on God. But that aside, God is always present and he's never he's never pushy. He doesn't force us in a relationship. He doesn't force that. And that's what I love about him is that he always is there for us. And it's it's our decision on what we want to do and how much we want to give to that relationship. Another story with the with the rules is the baptism. Think about it. There are some religions that think you have to be immersed in water. Other ones say you need water, just sprinkled in water. I mean, we have so many different rules to divide us. And that's not what Christianity is about. It's about bringing people together. And I want to share quickly a story about my baptism experience. And then I'll go in to six ways to have a better relationship with Christ. And, and we'll end on that or I'll end on that. So when I was 22, I asked Christ into my heart and 10 months later, I wanted to go to church. I was home on summer break and I wanted to go to church. I didn't want to dress up. And I was back in the day, it was, you dressed up for church. So I had heard that there was a church where they wore jeans. It was a country church. And I thought, that's, that's a church I could really go to. I mean, I literally went because people could wear jeans. So I asked my dad to go with him and he went with me. And it turns out one of the guys in the church um, knew my father because my dad had been his school teacher as well as his principal when he was in middle school. This guy was in his 40s at the time. I was in my 20s. So anyway, I became friends with Keith and he started visiting me. I was living with my parents at the time and he came to, to visit me and he talked to my dad. And one day he goes, Cindy, he goes, have you been baptized? And I said, no. And he explained to me what it was. And he said, I said, he said, read Acts, the second chapter. And think if that's something you'd want to do. So I, I was all about, you know, investigation. So one day I went to Caesars Creek and I'm sitting there looking at the beautiful water and, and I was reading my Bible and it made sense to get baptized. So a few days later, Keith came to visit again and, and he asked me if I read scripture. I said, yes. He said, well, what do you think about getting baptized? And I said, I think it sounds like a good idea. And he goes, do you want to do it now? Keep in mind, it was 11 o'clock at night. And I said, okay. And then he turns to my dad and he goes, do you want to go with us? And he said, sure. So he called his mother who had keys to the church. And I was baptized, fully immersed with my dad watching as well as Keith's mom. And it was a wonderful expression of my dedication to Christ and my life in Christ. Now, fast forward to 2014, I had rededicated my life because I'd spent many years treating my relationship with God like he was Santa Claus and what could he give me. It was very much based on conditional love on my end. And so I wanted to rededicate my, myself to the relationship. So I decided to get baptized again. And this time I was taking a trip to Athens, Greece, and I decided to get baptized in an Anglican church. It was a, it was a sprinkle baptism. I contacted the reverend. I don't know what they're called. If it's a pastor, I contacted the, the person that was in charge at the church and he agreed to do it. And so I had it done in Athens, Greece. So either way, it was a commitment to Christ. And again, I say God looks at our, our hearts. And I, on a side note, it was kind of hilarious, actually. 
I had a date that night. I had met this Greek man and um, he was taking me out to eat at this cafe and I had just been baptized. I was supposed to meet him at a specific place and it was a nice time. He was a nice guy. He wasn't particularly, quote, my type, I should say, but he was he was fun. And he was trying to get me to, to go home with them. He goes, oh, just ditch your hotel. You're flying out tomorrow. Come, come sleep on my couch. And I'm going, why would I want to sleep on a couch when I'm in a nice hotel? And I mean, the point was, we all know what, you know, he was interested in and I wasn't interested in doing that. And I told my neighbor at the time, she was um, a deacon actually in a Baptist church. And uh, she was funny. She goes, she goes, you just rededicated your life and he's already trying to make you backslide. <laughs> and I said, I know, right? Um, but the, the, point, the point of the story is, is that it was two different times in my life and I wanted to dedicate myself to the relationship. And I don't think God really cares whether it's, it, it's actually, you know, whether you're immersed, whether it's sprinkle baptism, it's about your heart and it's an act that, that shows of, of what you want in the relationship, what you want to, to him to, to do in your life and for you to, to be a blessing to others. So let me get to those seven ways to build a relationship with Christ. First, you have to ask for the relationship and you have to ask for it. Now I asked for it back in 1983 and then over the years, I asked for it again and again and again. I'm not saying that it didn't take the first time. I'm just telling you that I hit a wall in life and I wanted to come back. And as I've said before, I felt like the prodigal daughter. I was coming back to God. He had the open arms. And once I made that confession of faith, it was at that point that I needed to invest the time because any relationship that's worth anything, you have to invest the time. So, the next thing is to take time to touch base with God. We get so into our lives, we and we forget God is here to talk to, and He wants to be a part of every aspect of our lives. So just invest the time in the relationship. The third one is to invite Him to come close. If you truly want a wonderful relationship, it's you've got to just ask and and say, look, God, show me, show me more of you. And he does amazing things. Um, I know I've had different dreams. He has pulled me through situations where it's a miracle that I'm here today it's, I can only tell you that it's a relationship that is, is amazing. Now we have human relationships here and, and those are challenging enough. Um, but I can tell you if you want a, any kind of higher relationship, that's with your creator and that's God, at least it's been in my experience. So there are two more things as well. And I think that they go hand in hand. You have to talk to God. Now for talking is easy for me. For some people, it may not be as easy. There are people that are introverted or shy and, and it's not easy for them to talk, but God hears your heart and you don't have to worry about saying perfect words. He meets us where we're at. And so talk to God. So you basically then have to listen. It's not enough to talk to God and not listen to what he has to say. I'm not talking about an audible voice. I'm talking about that still small voice that you have inside that you know what you know, what you know that it's God. And you might be saying, well, Cindy, how do I know if it's God or not? Well, the closer you are to God and the more you walk with him, you'll realize what that voice is. And once you do hear from God, you have to take action. You, ha you have to discern it when you hear God's voice. And it's not enough just to hear it. You have to take action. And sometimes that's difficult. And that's where our faith comes into it. I mean, it's easy to do things if you can see the other side of it. 
But if it's something that it's uncomfortable that you're not sure about, you can always test that with scripture. And that's a good idea as well as getting wise counsel. Uh, my brother is a very strong Christian. And when I have, uh, I need wise counsel or wisdom, I will go, go to my brother because he's walked with God a long time. He knows scripture and I appreciate his, his expertise in that. You build a relationship with God one day at a time. It doesn't happen overnight. So don't get up, don't get caught up in, in all the rules and make it about your heart. And again, don't get caught up in those cultural rules because it's enough to drive you crazy, actually, <laughs> to try to keep all the, the do's and don'ts that people say. But God is always there for you in the relationship. And for me, the relationship, the relationship is king. I mean, it, he's the king and it is, it takes precedence. So I hope that this has been a blessing for you today. And if you like the video, I'd appreciate if you would like it. And if you have not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. I publish twice a week. And so I hope you have a faith-filled day.